Hey guys, it is I, Tetra, and in this video we will be taking another look into Project Cold War with a specific focus on the Riketa. Now, quick disclaimer, this game is in closed alpha, so bear that in mind, content is not final, this is a work in progress. Um, if you would like to participate in the playtest, it has been extended to Sunday, so I will leave some details down below, and uh, if you're interested, there'll be some information there as well as a link. Now, with that out the way, let's um, get into this and talk about the Riketa. So, I'm going to first run through the stats of the vehicle, and then I will have some gameplay probably around the four and a half, five minute mark. So, if you're not really into the stats shenanigans, then you can feel free to skip forward there. Now, with the Riketa, it is one of the attacker agents, and I find that it kind of has to do that. Uh, this vehicle, I really find, cannot play at range. Um, it does substantially better when you're up close and personal with people. But let me run you through the uh, features and then my build, and I will then take you into that gameplay. So firstly, we have our frontman trait, which is Sharpshooter. Scoring three critical hits doubles your autoloader speed and grants 25% movement boost for uh, 10 seconds. Now, I've got some upgrades that uh, add to this ability, but we'll get there in my build. So then we have the autoloader. Now, if you guys are familiar with World of Tanks, this actually works a little bit more like an auto reloader, where uh, the base stats are you have three shells in the magazine. When you fire one, you start reloading. So if you fire one and you've got two left, you start reloading the third. And if you fire two, you start reloading the second and then the third and so on. Um, and then lastly, we have our rocket barrage, which is, it fires a number of rockets. This has been changed by the devs. I believe it's 16, uh, each dealing an amount of damage. Uh, I actually don't recall how much this ability was changed by when it comes to the damage. So yeah, but uh, I would say this, the, it was a bit of a buff actually, because they improved the angles at which you could fire. So you could actually tilt your rocket slightly further down, which would just allow you to get on people that uh, you would have otherwise just flung all your rockets over their head. Now, getting into the build, in slot 1 for the upgrades, we have an increase to damage and pen power, as well as module damage, just allowing us to get slightly more consistent crits. In slot 2, I don't think this is the best upgrade, but this ability is great. So it increases our accuracy while stationary, as well as our aiming speed. And then it gives our sharpshooter perk, or frontman trait, a increase uh, duration by 10 seconds. Now that allows you to pretty much get an extra three shots out, so I would say it's really, really good having that in extended time. Uh, this also plays together with our slot three upgrade, which is an increase to our forward and reverse speed. And then it also gains us a 10% movement speed bonus while the trait is active. In slot four, uh, just some energy improvements. This isn't really too important. Uh, Riketa doesn't have energy issues. In slot 5, we've got an increase to our reticle size while moving, further increases to our forward and reverse speed, slight buff to our track repair time, and then just our rocket pod reloads faster while we are immobilized, so basically while we are tracked. Uh, in slots 6 and 7, there is nothing to talk about as these slots do not currently have any statistics, um, and these are not actually available, they're coming soon. So I'm not going to apply one just in case it actually reduces the effectiveness of the vehicle and I just can't tell. Uh, in slot 9, we have an increase to our, sorry, in slot 8, we have an increase to our spotting range as well as spotting duration, and it also increases our spotting cone by 10% while moving. Uh, in slot 9, we've got further improvements to our forward speed, quite a big buff here, 25%, as well as an increase to our base acceleration and sprint energy cost. And then lastly, we've got an increase to our uh, engine energy regeneration rate when we score a crit. So score a critical hit and the engine regenerates energy twice as fast for five seconds. And then the big old exciting slot for all agents, we have an improved autoloader. So this reduces individual shell loading time uh, as well as reduces the time between shots and gives us two extra shots in the magazine, upping it from three to five. So that's quite nice. 
Uh, now, there are some negatives to take into account. It does increase the time it takes to repair your ammo rack, which is, I think, like a if you get your ammo rack damaged in a certain way, I think it reduces uh, its effectiveness, so you potentially reload a bit slower. But I will be honest, I've never really noticed a difference in game. And then lastly here, we've got an increase to the Amarak crit damage taken by 20%. So that's pretty brutal. You definitely want to bear that in mind when playing this vehicle. Um, and the reason I say that is the Raketa, in my opinion, is one of the easiest vehicles to get Amaracked in. You can Amarak the vehicle through the front side over here. Uh, you can Amarak it from side turret as well as rear turret. And then this little strip where you can see this bit of turret ring under the turret. Uh, this is also some way that it can be Amarak fairly consistently, so just bear that in mind when playing this vehicle. Okay, with all of that out the way, uh, let's get into that gameplay. Okay, so we are loading in here in our Raketa. This is the 5v5 plant and defuse game mode. Um, now, there's a few things I'd like to get out of the way immediately with this vehicle. Um, in my experience, Raketa is the only vehicle in this game that is not 100% accurate when you are fully aimed. Uh, this is pretty brutal and definitely something you need to be aware of because it basically means this vehicle can't engage at long ranges very effectively. Got a little lag spike there. Um, now, something that I would also say is the Raketa is quite good at um, ramming. Surprisingly good at ramming in my opinion. So, you know, getting getting right on top of people and just putting in a lot of pressure can definitely work with this tank. Um, just because it's something that it does surprisingly well. Now, I might have made a mistake here. Maybe I shouldn't actually be in this cap. They won't need their What shame to such a good Okay, we're gonna see if we can't manage to just kind of hunker down here and stay safe. As, uh, we've got a lot of incoming heat. Okay, the chopper is dealt with, so we're gonna just kite him around. Let's come up and try and deal with this Kent. I really want to try and get this guy. Nice. Okay, this is less than ideal. But we, we are alive and that's all that matters. Got that chopper to deal with on the enemy team. Okay. Oh, only I could drive. I feel like I'm letting my teammate down here. Okay. Nice. Okay, we managed to pick him up. Let's see if we can get this. Uh, Point secured. Um, okay, so... Okay, that was a surprisingly intense first engagement that we had there. But, um, yeah, as I was saying, basically, I find the Raketa basically can't snipe because it's the only tank in the game when you are fully aimed. Your shell, as you can see, it did not go center. It dropped to that little location. So... It's definitely something you have to be mindful of because it really doesn't allow it to engage at range. Uh, as well as that, you can't really deal with... Um, it, it just doesn't have a lot of penetration over range and it's not accurate. So you can't really hit the points you would need to hit to be, to be good at range. Um... Which is definitely unfortunate. I find that this vehicle is in its element when it's being aggressive. Uh, and basically trying to just catch people off guard, just rushing people down, using that bit of ramming damage you can do. But I find myself feeling very powerless in this vehicle in a lot of situations. And I'm sure for obvious reasons you can understand why sometimes that's actually not that fun. 
Um, when it just feels like you can't do anything against your enemy, well, what what's the point at that point? Oh, okay. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm maybe I should just trash this thing a little bit harder about its range performance because uh, I know that wasn't a far shot, but I'm surprised we hit that. Okay, well, we are going into our second round here. Haven't shown you guys the rocket barrage ability, but I just haven't really felt like I've had the opportunity. Now, I've mentioned this in all my other videos, which uh, I'll leave a little pop-up for, so if you guys are interested in maybe checking out some other agents, you'll be able to. But, um... Yeah, this is a little spot that I always like to start on when spawning on the defending side. Now, I've only seen one vehicle move up, <clears throat> and that would be that guy. Okay. Very nice. The other two are on the other side there. I saw two of them. So we're going to try and move up here behind this Titan and see if we can't maybe get some some uh, rear turret ammo racks. Kind of like that. Nice. Okay, beautiful, beautiful. Now, they have completely worked their way through our team on this side. We have managed to get both the shells back in, so we're just going to try and really aggressively get forward here and just manage to get as much damage in as we possibly can. Okay. Now, I think that's all we're actually going to manage to get. We need to wait for our, our team here to, to kind of reinforce us. This Jaeger's going to get deleted. Um, I really feel like I need to be very, very aggressive, which is just kind of unfortunate because yeah and there's that accuracy and that's a very ugly head okay we're actually gonna we're gonna wait here on the reload never mind because I can see that I'll get that crit okay we've got well, maybe if we can tilt ourselves up a little bit we might Oh, wow. Okay, that's actually crazy. I think he managed to get an ammo rack on us there, either through the turret or actually through that, that little part of the turret ring that I talked about. That's unfortunate. Or maybe he just hit us for enough and we did actually ram him, and the combination of the ram and um, his shot just killed us. Mm, unfortunately, I think uh, this might be a GG. But we will... S oh, wow. Okay. I, I couldn't see the enemy's health there, but I really thought that the uh, Kent would be able to just mosey on through. 30 seconds left. Okay, so the question is, can we defuse in 30 seconds? It's looking like it's going to be very much down to the wire here. It might have been... Ooh, it's close. It's very close. No, we're alright. We're gonna win. Yeah. Okay, so, I mean, it looks like it takes about 25 seconds there to, to decap a point, so... Uh, in, in the plant diffuse game mode, so be aware of that. I believe it does go faster with multiple people. Yeah, that was a very close match, then. Okay, well, once again, I'm gonna kind of just try and indicate to my team that I would like to go A. I think um, one of Roquette's greatest strength is actually just how incredibly mobile this vehicle is. Uh, it can get to locations so much faster than, well, so many other things. So we're just going to get straight into this cap circle and just pray that we can get this cap down. Because I would really like to get out of here once, once we have managed to plant. Um, okay, we've got one coming in. That looks like a... That's the Titan. Oh, where... Okay, I'm gonna try and get up here and maybe... Oh, okay, no, no, no. Oh, that's not ideal. It's not quite what we want. We're gonna try and get up here and see if we can't maybe help this, this poor Jaeger. Mm. 
Mm, yeah, not ideal there. Now the question is, is that Jaeger trying to flank me or... Oh, oh are we all right? We just can't manage to get that. Okay, there's, there's our ammo. Okay, it's just this Titan left. We should be alright here. At least hopefully. We're gonna get behind him. I don't know where that one went. You're making it too easy for me, comrade. Okay, the Kira's got him. And there we are. That is uh, our first match here. We managed to secure a 3-0 victory, which is great. I would say that was uh, an all right performance there. Uh, I, I really struggle in the Rakata guys, I'm not going to lie to you. So for me to be second on the team, I'm, I'm very happy with that. Especially in such a small game mode where there isn't quite a, like so much kills and damage going around. But yeah, let me bring you back for the second game. Okay, so we are loading in here into our second match. This is a 6v6. So we need to be contesting the B point and just trying to, to hold it out. Now, with how fast I am in this Rakata, I am going to... Pro you can see, we're, we're, we are going 90 right now. Like, this vehicle is insanely fast. So we are just going to rush down to this point and try and get it first. We'll try and hold it out for as long as it takes for our team to hopefully join up with us. But uh, we... Yeah, we're going to probably have a pretty hard time if we get um, everybody coming face in. Okay, we've got it. Okay, let's see if you can... Oh. Okay, you know what? I actually I'm gonna I'm gonna very aggressively push up and around here. That's how we do it in the Soviet Union. You're making it too easy for me. Okay, very nice. Yeah, we just really wanna hold this point. Um I think if any point there is a a large enough volume of enemy tanks that we just get overwhelmed, we will lose the point. And in this game mode, once you have, once a team has the point, I will say it's quite hard to take it back. Like it's definitely doable, but um, like it's something that uh, I'd be lying if I said it was easy. Uh, but it does seem like this might be a bit of a, a non-match. This one's really quick, guys. I'll actually I'll bring us on for for another one. Okay, we're getting we're getting bullied. We're gonna try and get a heal off here. Got the enemy Raketa coming in. So let's see if I can demonstrate those through the turret ammo racks, maybe. No, we're just we're just getting absolutely goofed. Okay. <laughs> I will say, um, I love the Akira. It is one of my favorite vehicles, but it's also sometimes the bane of my existence. It's just an agent that I can never find crits on. Uh, so it just, and it just, it just eats you away so fast with that little gun. It's a very, very powerful vehicle in my opinion. I think it, for me, it might be one of the, one of the top two. I think, um, I've personally found the most success with Udenik. Uh, on a consistent basis, but um, Akira can have some absolutely monstrous games. Okay, but yeah, I, I think this is going to be a bit of a non-game, guys. I think, uh, unfortunately, the enemy team is just not really going to manage to take this point. We are just, we're just all over them, and they can't really do too much about it. Oh my goodness. And we finally get the the Amarak, but at the cost of our lives.
I don't even know if that was an Amarak that was under turret or turret face against that Riketa. But hey, this game is over in 20, 30 seconds. That being said, a lot of our teams just died out. Udenik is low. I don't know if that's a... What is that? Another Udenik. So... Yeah, uh, it looks like we're going to lose the point here. This might actually not be such a short game after all. Okay, well that's a little awkward. Oh, that's unfortunate. And by the way, this is what I was talking about, about the auto-loading mechanism. You can see we're just about to reload that shell and we just start loading the next one. So it's not a true auto-loader, like something uh, to compare it to in this game, maybe like the Udenik, um, where you have a an actual auto-loader, not what I would consider an auto-reloader. Okay, well, you're getting to see a little bit of rocket action there, but uh, yeah. So, this is a good example of kind of what I was talking about. Um, this is one of those situations where I feel very powerless. I don't feel like I can rush in there and do anything. Like, if I was playing an Udenik, I could just sit back a little bit away from the cap circle, like the first few shots I took in this vehicle, and just work people down. Uh, in this thing, because of the range performance, I don't really feel like I, I can afford to do that. I can't really push in. Um, it just doesn't really feel like I can do anything. At least anything that will be good. Like, obviously there are there are things I can do, but the question is, should I? Now, when people just come up and uh, give me their the back of them, then obviously those rear tower shots are very easy. But we've also just finished up, so I guess we managed to bring this one back. Okay. Well... I think um, I think that was an all right performance. Once again, we are in second there. Nothing too crazy, um, but yeah, I started feeling very powerless towards the end of the game there. And I I think I think Riketa for me is a vehicle that can be really really fun, really explosive because of the auto loader as well as the rockets you get. Uh, the high mobility is awesome on this vehicle. You can actually run like circles around people, especially if you kind of save up your boost. And then when you're kiting someone, you know, like if there's if they're tracks are locked down you can kind of just run circles around them uh using the boost to try and keep out of their their gun line um but at the same time you you're, you're just covered in amaraks the front turret amarak the side amarak the side turret the rear turret i don't know guys i struggle to play this one a little bit if you guys have any tips for me please uh do leave them down in the comments below but um yeah, I think, I think that concludes what I have to say about this vehicle. So if you have enjoyed, please do consider leaving a like and subscribing. Um, it really helps out a ton, guys. And yeah, we'll see you in the next one.